Adolf Meyer, Wikipedia article audio. Adolf Meyer was a psychiatrist who rose to prominence as the first psychiatrist in chief of the Johns Hopkins Hospital. He was president of the American Psychiatric Association in 1927-28 and was one of the most influential figures in psychiatry in the first half of the 20th century. His focus on collecting detailed case histories on patients was one of the most prominent of his contributions. He oversaw the building and development of the Henry Phipps Psychiatric Clinic at Johns Hopkins Hospital, opened in April 1913, making sure it was suitable for scientific research, training, and treatment. Meyer's work at the Phipps Clinic is arguably the most significant aspect of his career. Meyer's main theoretical contribution was his idea of ergasiology to describe a psychobiology. This brought together all the biological, social, and psychological factors and symptoms pertaining to a patient. It considered mental illnesses to be a product of dysfunctional personality not a pathology of the brain. Believing that whole life social and biological factors should be central to both diagnosis and treatment Meyer was one of the earliest psychologists to support occupational therapy as an important connection between the activities of an individual and their mental health, and incorporated community-based activities and services to develop people's everyday living skills. Personal Life and Education Medical Career Adolf Meyer was born in Niederweiningen, Switzerland in 1866. He was the son of a Zwinglian pastor. Meyer received his M.D. from the University of Zurich in 1892, where he studied neurology under Augusta Farrell. During his time at the university, he studied abroad in Paris, London, and Edinburgh, working under John Hewlings Jackson and Jean Martin Charcot. Unable to secure an appointment with the university, he emigrated to the United States in 1892. Meyer married Mary Brooks on September 15, 1902. They had one daughter, Julia Lathrop Meyer, on February 14, 1916. Meyer died on March 17, 1950, in Baltimore, Maryland, at the age of 83 due to an unspecified cause. After moving to the United States, Meyer first practiced neurology and teaching at the University of Chicago, where he was exposed to the ideas of the Chicago functionalists. He was unable to find a paid full-time post at the University of Chicago, so his time at the university was short-lived. From 1893 to 1895, he served as pathologist at the new mental hospital at Kankakee, Illinois, after which he worked at the state hospital at Worcester, Massachusetts all the while publishing papers prolifically in neurology, neuropathology, and psychiatry. In 1902, he became director of the Pathological Institute of the New York State Hospital System, where in the next few years he shaped much of American psychiatry by emphasizing the importance of keeping detailed patient records and by introducing both Emil Kreppelin's classificatory system and Sigmund Freud's ideas. While in the New York State Hospital system, Meyer adopted Freud's ideas about the importance both of sexuality and of the formative influence of early rearing on the adult personality. Though Meyer found Freud's ideas interesting, he never practiced psychoanalysis and increasingly distanced himself from it as the years went on. As he wrote in his presidential address to the 84th Annual Meeting of the American Psychiatric Association, 
those who imagine that all psychiatry and psychopathology and therapy have to resolve themselves into a smattering of claims and hypotheses of psychoanalysis and that they stand or fall with one's feelings about psychoanalysis, are equally misguided. Meyer was professor of psychiatry at Cornell University from 1904 to 1909. In 1908, Meyer was asked to become the director of a new psychiatric clinic at the Johns Hopkins Hospital after Henry Phipps Jr. donated $1.5 million to open the clinic. Meyer accepted the offer, though not immediately. He oversaw the building and development of the clinic and made sure the building was suitable for scientific research, training, and treatment. The Henry Phipps Psychiatric Clinic opened in April 1913. Meyer's work at the Phipps Clinic is arguably the most significant aspect of his career. His model for the Phipps Clinic combined clinical and laboratory work which was the first time these elements had been combined in a mental institute in the United States. Though the Phipps Clinic did not use the clinical model of Emil Kreppelin, Meyer did incorporate some of Kreppelin's practices into the clinic. These practices include extensive observations of the patients and studying both the pre-symptomatic and remissive phases of mental illness along with the periods of acute illness. Early career Meyer also served as a professor of psychiatry at Johns Hopkins Medical School from 1910 to 1941. In his beginning years at Johns Hopkins, Meyer helped oversee the work of a few of his aspiring students. Phyllis Greenacre, from the University of Chicago, and Kurt Richter, a Harvard graduate both got the opportunity to study under Meyer. Most notably, Richter studied the behavior of rats with Meyer and John Watson, a behavioral psychologist. Adolf Meyer worked at Johns Hopkins until his retirement in 1941. Time in New York Many of Meyer's students went on to make significant contributions to American psychiatry or psychoanalysis, though not necessarily as Meyerians. Most of the founders of the New York Psychoanalytic Society had worked under Meyer at Manhattan State Hospital, including its chief architect Abraham Arden Brill, and Charles McPhee Campbell. Meyer and William Henry Welch played an instrumental role in Clifford Beer's founding of the Connecticut Society for Mental Hygiene in 1908. Under Meyer's direction, Leo Kenner founded the first child psychiatry clinic in the United States at the Johns Hopkins Hospital in 1930. Meyer's main contribution was in his ideas of psychobiology where he focused on addressing all biological, social, and psychological factors and symptoms pertaining to a patient. Meyer coined the term ergasiology, which has Greek roots for working and doing, as another way to classify psychobiology. One of his ideas was that mental illnesses were a product of a dysfunctional personality and not from the pathology of the brain. He also stressed the idea that social and biological factors that affect someone throughout their entire life should be heavily considered when diagnosing and treating a patient. Another contribution of Meyer was that he was of the earlier psychologists that supported occupational therapy. He thought there was an important connection between the activities of an individual and their mental health. Taking this into consideration he looked for community-based activities and services to aid people with everyday living skills. The Phipps Clinic and Johns Hopkins Medical School Meyer was a strong believer in the importance of empiricism, and advocated repeatedly for a scientific approach to understanding mental illness. He hoped that the Phipps Clinic would help put mental illness on the same ground as every other human illness. 
he insisted that patients could best be understood through consideration of their psychobiological life situations. He reframed mental disease as biopsychosocial reaction types rather than as biologically specifiable natural disease entities. In 1906, he reframed dementia precox as a reaction type, a discordant bundle of maladaptive habits that arose as a response to biopsychosocial stressors. Meyer was involved with the Eugenics Records Office which he viewed as a natural extension of the mental hygiene movement which he helped to create. He was in the American Eugenics Society, serving on its advisory council for 12 years from 1923 to 1935. Legacy Though Meyer never published a book, he published over 250 articles in various journals in the United States and Europe. Listed below are a few of Meyer's publications. For a more extensive list of his publications, see the further reading section. People T. He collected papers of Adolf Meyer, edited by Eunice E. Winters. Baltimore, The Johns Hopkins University Press, 1950-1952 Four Vols T. He Common Sense Psychiatry of Dr. Adolf Meyer, 52 Selected Papers, edited by Alfred A. Leaf. New York, McGraw-Hill, 1948. Contributions to Psychology Psychobiology, A Science of Man, compiled and edited by Eunice E. Winters and Anna May Bowers. Springfield, I.L. Charles C. Thomas. This posthumous book was based on the first Thomas W. Salmon lectures, which Meyer gave in 1931. George Kirby's Guides for History Taking and Clinical Examination of Psychiatric Cases is essentially the form Meyer created and used at Manhattan State Hospital in 1905 1906. It provides an excellent view of Meyer's early approach to taking case histories. Richard Knoll, American Madness, The Rise and Fall of Dementia Precox S. D. Lamb, Pathologist of the Mind, Adolf Meyer and the Origins of American Psychiatry Meyer's influence on American psychology can be explored in defining American psychology, the Correspondence Between Adolf Meyer and Edward Bradford Titchener, edited by Ruth Lees and Rand B. Evans. Baltimore slash London, The Johns Hopkins University Press. Publications Though there is no biography of Meyer, his work and significance for American psychoanalysis are discussed in John C. Burnham's Psychoanalysis in American Medicine, 1894-1917, Medicine, Science, and Culture. New York, International Universities Press, 1967. Meyer's importance to the development of American psychoanalysis is also extensively discussed and interpreted in John Gatch's Culture and Complex, On the Early History of Psychoanalysis in America pages 135-160 in Essays in the History of Psychiatry, edited by Edwin R. Wallace IV and Lucius Presley. Columbia, S.C., William S. Hall Psychiatric Institute, 1980. The Anatomical Facts and Clinical Varieties of Traumatic Insanity, The Nature and Conception of Dementia Precox, Constructive Formulation of Schizophrenia. See also Theodore Lidge, Adolf Meyer and the Development of American Psychiatry. The American Journal of Psychiatry, 123, pp. 323-32 and ch. Christensen Adolf Meyer Revisited Connections Between Lifestyle, Resilience, and Illness. Journal of Occupational Science 14,6376 Notes